Good afternoon and praise the Lord. It's a good afternoon that the Lord has made, that you may rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for choosing to be here. Thank you for choosing to to fellowship with us. We are calling it a fellowship, really. Yeah, because it's an interactive session. So we are here to study the Word of God as young people yet another time. Uh, join us. Be active as we are going step by step to understand uh, uh, this text today. Um, just, just choose to be active. Choose to, to take your Bible and and sit down, relax, and and let's do this together. So with me, I have Priska and I have Steve, uh, the same same guys that I had last time. Uh, I mean, on, on Tuesday last week, where we did um, the book of Isaiah chapter 61, and it was very very amazing. And so today we are doing um, Luke 10, 38 to 42, another interesting text. You know the good thing with Bible, it's, it's very amazing. The stories are interesting. Besides you getting the revelation and um, getting to hear what God is saying about your life at that particular time, the stories themselves are very, are very, very interesting. And so kindly uh, invite, um, uh, share the link with your colleagues, with your friends, with young people, let's know uh, what they have to say about uh, this forum and, and this, uh, this uh, study today. And uh, last week we said that studying the Word of God is very important. As a Christian, as a growing Christian, studying the Word of God is paramount. And we studied and we read the book of Second Timothy, uh, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, which says, All scriptures is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. So basically the scripture is, is God, it's God's breath. It's, it's God speaking to us. I mean, he's able to train, to, to reprove, to correct, you know, because it's everything actually, it's all that we need. And, and, and let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 10. Um, Steve and Prisca will read from NIV. Uh, maybe we can start with Steve, uh, Luke 10, 38. Uh, Luke 10, 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Verse 41. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you're worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and will not be taken away from her. Okay, um, verse 42, try to get um, the, the version that talks about, um, verse 42 that says only one thing is needed. There, there is a version that talks about that. And as they're trying to get, thank you, Eric Muzami, you're tuned in. Thank you, you're saying you're locked in. Kevin and Zeal, thank you so much for, for choosing to be, to be with us this um, afternoon. Let's engage actively. Let's study the Word of God actively. Um, let's share our, 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 the revelations that we get from, from this text. You got it? Yeah. Which version, which version is that? In KJV. In KJV. That's King James. Yeah. Yeah, okay. New King James Version. Yeah. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Okay, so last time we used the acronym POWER to study the Word of God. And we said P stands for prayer. So before you begin, uh, you pray. And O, we said it's observe. Um, w, we said it's write, writing the revelation, what stands out for you. You just write it down. And E, we said it's envision. How does it apply into your life? And R, we said it's response, responding, responding to the... To the word of God. And so I'll ask Steve to, to pray even as we begin this afternoon. Okay, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we 
Thank you and we glorify your name today that we are in your presence, my Father and my God, to study about your word, to be able to understand, Lord Jesus, how we can better know you, how we can better be in a, a good relationship with you. How I pray that everyone that is joining us today, my Father and my God, that you may reveal unto them something new today. We thank you. We bless your name. In the name of Jesus, I have prayed, trusting and believing. Amen. 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 Thank you, Steve. Uh, so there is, this is a story of um, Mother Mary and, 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 uh, and, and Jesus. <laughs> it's a very interesting story because uh, Priska, where was uh, Jesus coming from? Maybe now going to the observed part of it, uh, trying to see. These are the things that you can see. And we said last time, the things that you can observe, you can either observe them at that particular text or trying to read before the text that... That, that was before the, the current text, or you can read even after. Because we said when you are studying the word of God, you don't pick up a, a, a line or a verse and, and, and run with it. You have to study to understand the context. Where was he? Where was he coming from? Where was he going? What was he doing? You know, what did this imply in that particular culture? Just trying to understand what was happening in the, uh, at that particular time. And that's what we want to do. So we are at observe, observing um, what the scripture is saying. And so where was Jesus? Where was Jesus coming from? What was happening, Priska? So um, to find where Jesus was, was hmm, Luke chapter 9. Um, Jesus was in Bethsaida with the seven. Once he, once he had already sent the 72 apostles out, they came back, and now at the end of chapter 9, we are revealed to that they were in Bethsaida. They were in Bethsaida. Yeah. Ah, okay. And where was, were they going? Oh, so at this time, uh, they were on their way to Jerusalem, but then they passed through uh, Martha's house, which is in a village called uh, Bethany. Mm. Yeah. Ah, so, okay. So Bethany, basically, it was a small town in, in Judea. <coughs> And uh, Judea was just near Jerusalem. We are trying to understand what was happening at that particular time. And uh, if you read the, 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 the part that is the, the, the previous chapter, it was where Jesus was just uh, like sending the 72 disciples. And it's like commissioning them, telling them, go ye and preach, you know, and giving them the measures they have to observe as they, as they minister. And it is at that particular time that, um, uh, that Jesus decided to, to go to to Mary and Mother's place, okay? Yes. Um, so there is a repetition in verse 41. This is, these are the words of Jesus. Mother, Mother. Why, why was Jesus using that repetition? Why didn't he say Mother? Like, Prisca, I'm a Steve. Why did he have to say Mother, Mother? I believe it was for emphasis. Mm, for emphasis. Yeah. Okay. When I call you twice, I'm like, hey, okay. Uh huh. Tell me. Yeah. Yeah. Just mm. to, to capture her, her her attention. Okay, Steve, you have something yes. different? No, it's uh, it's probably just the same. He wanted to catch her attention mm. because she was distracted with something. Mm. Yeah. So it's Martha, mother, not Martha. Martha. Like when I say Steve, Steve, and then you know there is a tone. You can a from tone, that yeah. if you read that text, you'll understand the the yeah. tone. You know, like Martha, Martha. You know, it's not like Mother, Mother. Uh, it's not like Martha, Martha. Martha. You know, yeah. if you read the text, the, you can understand the tone that Jesus was using. So it's like Martha, Martha. So it was a repetition. It was, it was showing emphasis. I'm not only calling you, but I'm seriously, I need your attention. Like Martha, Martha. And you know where Martha was at that particular time? Kitchen, probably in the kitchen. Sorry? Probably, probably. in the yeah. kitchen. Okay. He, was, he was busy. He was doing some stuff in the kitchen. You know, and where was Mary at this particular time? At the feet. Jesus, yeah, at the feet <laughs> of Jesus. You know, uh, in their culture, it was not acceptable. Was there is no way a woman could sit at the feet of a teacher or a man, you know. No. In any case, women were supposed to be doing what mother was doing. Yeah. They were not supposed to be seated there at the, listening to Jesus. For who? Listening for what? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So it was very abnormal. You know, and so mother is concerned. Let's see, what's the attitude of mother in this particular context, Steve? Uh, I can say mother is, Kwanza, uh, she can be a big sister. Yeah. 
she, she was she like was it. yeah mm. the tone that she used uh it was yeah. like they don't want to do work but they want to eat eh? yeah <laughs> so i can relate to this because i also have older siblings eh? so i know, you know she was strict treated. yes i know I, how i'm still being treated right now <laughs> she's strict and she's also worried because uh, just as you've said it was a cultural thing for women to cook and men to actually be taught yeah yeah so mm. she was also worried yeah. Yeah. yeah and i'm trying to think in 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 our setup right now yeah. when there are visitors the ladies and all the sisters all the children the girls in the house they'll have something to do yeah. either you bring that cup you bring that uh, the sugar dish the girls have something to do yeah. and in their culture it wasn't any different mm. by any means mm. whenever they are visited and you know was that is as Jesus and his disciples mm. were on their way he came to a village where a woman named Martha so there is something that is not very clear did Jesus go with his disciples in the in mother's house you know but it was a culture of Jesus to go with the crowd akwana the mepeke we mse kwa peke yake you know he used to have either disciples either the 72 either the pharisee you know yeah. there were some there was always some people around him so there are chances that he went with these yeah. guys yeah. at yeah. mother's house mm. you get you know yeah. and so you can imagine the workload yeah. that was in that house cooking yeah. in our setup it's maybe mandazi you know these are guests you are, that you are not expecting chai hakuna maziwa unakimbia maybe liko kwa fridge ni kidogo so you have to add so there was a lot of work and this girl called mary she's somewhere seated at the feet of, of jesus it, it doesn't you know it doesn't make sense Um, please can read what um, mother said the, the words of mother to Jesus um, she came to him and asked lord don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself tell her to help me uh, does your bible does your version has exclamation mark yeah it has is it wasn't like please tell them like lord don't you care that my sister has left me you know i'm i'm trying to feel mother in this in this case Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to like I'm sure this idea. I'm sure to this idea, you know. Yeah. This was an overwhelmed person. Alikuwa tu amechoka. Anashangaa mara can't you see? And then he kind of is she's mad with Jesus. Jesus, can't you see? Can't you tell Mary to come and help me? I mean, I'm all alone, you know. And what was Jesus response? Hmm. Uh, he said, "My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her." Exactly. It will not be taken. Okay. The King James version says, "That is the James." No, this is New Living Translation. Uh, but one thing is needed. Yeah, one that's thing. what you see, right? And one thing is needed. And indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. These were the words of Jesus. Are they are they sounding encouraging or something? To Martha still. Uh, uh actually at this point uh I will not uh, really say what her reaction was <laughs> because she was still overwhelmed. Mm. I I believe she was confused because Uh, Jesus is telling her that Mary uh, has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Exactly. But your point ya nataka saidiwe ku serve. That was the need. That was right? the need for yeah. her at that <laughs> moment. Yeah. She I, she was still operating in the physical. Yeah. But Jesus is explaining things in the spiritual. Yeah. Now you see they, there's no way Martha ange angerada. Yeah, they say but we ato niambie hizi akam to achukue hicho mpya apeleke. Yeah. You see in another thing is that during in, in that culture uh, hospitality was really yeah. highly embraced. Yeah. You know that way Jesus was telling the 72 when you go and you are welcomed please take whatever you're given please take and bless them. You know and if they, they don't like welcome you into their house or give you a cup of to drink just uh, dust your feet and you know so, so hospitality was something that was really encouraged yeah. in in their in their culture. And so Martha for for real he, she was she was justified yeah. to do that but jesus is not encouraging her anyway 
in any in any way i mean he's telling mother you're worried and upset about too many things which are some of these things that might have been um upsetting me, mother well um through the reading i can see i'm cooking I'm, it's not just jesus if yeah. it's just jesus alone you know the pressure is little when you're having one one guest yeah. and 10 yeah. the pressure is li- is not the same and especially it was not uh, prepared you know it's not guest you know they were coming so now you're here you're now cooking you're wondering something is you know burning so i'm like why is she sitting there yeah. you know i'm just like things will burn i'm too overwhelmed yeah, yeah. yeah. so i'm I just saying she's in i need more yeah 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 those are the things that were overwhelming mother and by the fact that mary is seated First I'm trying to think mother is feeling you are doing the wrong thing. You First. should not be seated there. What are you doing? You know, you should get up. And I'm trying to imagine how Mary reacted after after Jesus said Mary has chosen the right thing, you know? Mm. Exactly. She was feeling good. <laughs> I mean, you were there complaining but Jesus knows I've, I've chosen the right mm. thing. So she was feeling all good. She was feeling all all over the world, you know. Yeah. So good like I mean Jesus as a proof that I'm doing yeah. like dark yeah. come Who let's sit here this is the real thing you know <laughs> and it's very very interesting um how how everything was running and so let's go to the second part uh, of it that's um so you have drew with observation these are basically the things that we can we are looking at and the things that uh, as human beings we can just try to interpret according to what is written yeah um So let's go to W. W is right. So we did the first one was prayer. We prayed, then we have ob- ob- made our observation and so we go to W. We said we write out a uh, verse that stands out to you. So we said when you're doing your devotion and growth, I, I mean and in your, um, your your prayer and studying the word of God, you have to have a pen and and a notebook so that you na- you note down the things that stand out for you. So at this point we will just mention the verses that uh, that to doubt for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For me it's all these four verses because uh it's like they are, they are all connected uh in this way. Uh first Mary amechildo hapo. Mm. Anajua fai kuwa hapo. Yeah. According to the society yeah. fai kuwa hapo but she's there. Then uh the destruction in Martha and Martha then kuna hii part sasa ana ambiwa you are worried is if it is any vitu za dunia yeah. Yeah. <laughs> actually actually that is what i am easily vitu za dunia <laughs> yeah. so uh, this is how mm, it reflects how our 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 lives are actually we we uh the last time uh the last discussion we had i said that when jesus died God was completely pleased. So mm. there is nothing that we can do that can please him. Yeah. So now this is also how we we know that we know that. But now in this case Martha she's dwelling more in the works. She's dwelling more in the works rather than having a connection. No no. Like anata uh it's like you want to serve, mm. you want to serve. But you do not want to have a relationship with the person that you are serving. Mm. You want to serve. I I believe there is one time in my life I was a martha. Yeah. Like I I want to sing. Yeah. I want to go for mission. Yeah. But I don't pray. I don't yeah. want to sit. Now I don't want. You see the same way you breathe in and you breathe out. There's no time to breathe out alafu yeah. kaivo. You will die. <laughs> yeah. Was it to breathe in ushikilie? these things are connected now that is the same way we we have to be those works actually they are good whatever she was doing ni kitu mzuri sana but then if you are not nourished and that nourishment comes when you are at the feet of Jesus and that is why Jesus anasema Mary amejua the secret that is why ya amepata so it is first you get nourished then you go out and work mm. it's not you go and work then you come back get nourished then yes. you get the strength to you go. breathe in you breathe in jesus yeah you breathe out service <laughs> yeah you breathe out service yeah you breathe out service yes you know. okay priest which verse stood out for you 
verse um, 41 and 42. Okay. I'm using message version. Mm. The master said, Martha, dear Martha, you're fussing far too much and getting yourself worked up over nothing. Only one thing is essential, and Mary has chosen it. It's the main cause and won't be taken from her. I like how message has a way of putting you know, the word in a very modern way, in a way that you would understand. I use KJV sometimes and I'm like, where? Okay. No. Then I look for message because mm. there's a way message connects with me. So you're fussing far too much and getting yourself worked up over nothing. Yeah. F- for writing, yeah, we'll explain later. That's yeah. just what... Yeah. Uh, for me, the verse that stood out is um, the, the first part of verse 42. But one thing is needed. Just that. These are the words of Jesus. I mean, just one thing. One thing. I know you have so many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen what is better. You know? Mm-hmm. I mean, so I'm trying, I try to figure out. I have so many things, but out of all this, Jesus is saying, one thing is needed. Okay? Yeah, uh, please, our uh, viewers, uh, tell us which uh, verse stood out for you uh, so that we know we are uh, the same on the same page. So tell us which verse stood out for you and maybe you can tell us why uh, trying just to so that we know we are together. So those are the verses that stood out for us. So we're saying in, in real setup, we, we write them down. And then we go to E, envision. What do you see this verse applied in your life? Or how do you see it applied in your life? We start with Prisca. So um, from the verse that stood out for me, I was just thinking of um, there is this person I like. She's called Stephanie. Stephanie Great Zinger. There's a way her heart for God draws me to God. Um, I'm at a, I came to a point where I was thinking for Solomon to say all these things. Solomon had everything that people are looking for. Solomon had money. Solomon yeah. had influence. Had women. Not women. Had yeah. women. Had Lots. wisdom. Solomon had everything that you could ever want. Mm, yeah. Actually, everything that everyone is looking for. And then he comes to a point where he says, you know what, all this is vanity. When I had that verse, I was like, Kwani, what did he see in God that he came to a point where what everyone else is looking for is vanity too. You know, it, to him, all that doesn't really matter. And then Paul says, I count all this as loss so that I may gain Christ. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then I see now this verse. Now I want to connect now the three. Um, Jesus says, "All this is vanity." Ah, sorry. Jesus says, um, "You're being, you're getting yourself worked up for nothing. You're fussing over too much, mm. and you're forgetting the most essential thing." Mm. I have school. I have ministry. I have family. I have a relationship. I have friends, and all these things are very important to my heart, but. As you said, um, I need to be nourished first. I can't do anything apart from God nourishing me. I can't. I can't. Mm. I'm looking at Martha. I don't think Martha was wrong to get all worked up. It, I feel she's justified to get all worked up because she's doing things for God. And sometimes in ministry, you may be like, you're just the one serving. People are not around. Yeah. You're the one on Monday. Yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're the, one, you're the only person who's there. And then you get to a point where you're actually now frustrated. You're not working from a point of love. You're working from a point of frustration. You're like, I'm the only person serving. Did I get saved alone? Yeah. You know? I'm just imagining being in that state. But now, seeing this word, it reminds me to just breathe. Breathe. Literally, just breathe mm-hmm. and sit at the feet of Jesus. Sit there. Pick up whatever you need from him. You have worries and anxiety. Lay them there. Let him love on you. And then out of that, help you um, do what now you need to do. Your, those, all those things are important. And he says in Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom. Mm. Then all these other things. Mm. He knows they're important. He gives them to you. He gives Many ministry to you. Mm-hmm. He gives a husband to you. He gives all these other things to you. So he knows it's very important to you. So when he says just seek the kingdom first, he knows what he's saying. So what do we do? We, are, we yield. And we seek. And we sit at his feet. So for me, that was like a reminder to just go back to the place of communion, to go back to the place of, to go back to the garden. 
yes to literally mm. go back to eden and sit at his feet and partake mm. yes uh, uh, clearly partake and going back to our fellowship and 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 having that intimate relationship with him you know mm. breathing like you can't keep on breathing out all the time you are you can't i mean you need to breathe in and breathe out you know and so it's like eating the way steve said you just can't eat all the time you eat and then you serve you know uh yeah and that was priska and steve let's hear from you how can you apply this in your life I, you are worried and upset about many things but it's amazing if it was a dunia so uko mbele uh, i think 12 chapter 12 verse 25 uh, jesus and auliza who uh, amongst you by worrying would add an hour to your lifespan. Yo kitu nilisoma eh nikasema nitaachana na kila kitu sitakuwa nafikiria I will just allow him to take to take to take control. Now uh ipad what uh, what really stood out for me it's priority. What is your priority? You see priority our priorities are derived from our values true mm. now what do we value mm. are we valuing the service or are we valuing the person we need to serve mm. what are we valuing ju mm. i can come here we can mm. discuss we can tunaweza fanya hivi every tuesday mm. but am i doing it so that nionekane facebook live mm. <laughs> am, I, am i doing it so that i can touch the heart of god yeah. priority priority whatever we are doing if it is it is not for the glory of god yeah when he anasema we are just worried about many things that is what stood out for mm. me and i reminded that what we do flows naturally mm. from who we are yeah. mm-hmm. what we do flows out naturally from who we are yeah. you can't pretend you can't You know if you didn't spend time with God we will see it in the public yeah. the way you're yeah. reacting and behaving with people uh-huh. your response to people mm. the way you treat your siblings the way you treat uh, uh, your neighbors mm-hmm. we will see you know so you can't just come from nowhere and just saying oh, yeah, you started behaving this no 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 i will know where you are process if you yeah they, we go back to the closet you know process, yeah. you know being in your chamber with God and having a relationship with, with 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 him so you just can't be whoever from nowhere i think mary valued learning a lot mother valued serving you know i'm thinking if mother continues to serve it will wear out it will get tired it will be exhausted it will be fatigued mary from the feet of jesus after learning you will come out energized yeah. you know strong with the ability to give and you'll give and give more you'll know how to relate with people to interact with people to have good relationship with people you know to serve better so as steve said it's a matter of priority what are you prioritizing who do you want to be and where are you getting that strength from because clearly you can't keep on serving all the time without having a relationship with the your king or your master you know you can't just like if you're employed clearly you can't just be going to the office and leaving you at some point you interact with your boss True. so that you know where they are going where the company is going and trying to to do that which you ought to do at that particular time so mother is is typically like most of us this is who we are we are so busy you wake up in the morning you have like 100 things to do during that day by the time you are going back at home you are very tired and the only thing that you want to do is just sleeping that is so matter that is so matter is i just want to give and give and give and serve you know just doing doing but no time to sit back relax pray reflect and just replenish you don't have that time you are ever busy serving and jesus is saying they don't matter they it doesn't really matter you know and in matthew 5 5 jesus said man shall not live by bread alone the bread that mother was preparing you know but by every word that comes from the mouth of of the lord that is what mary was trying to do that is what mary was trying to get from the feet of jesus 
listening to Jesus, you know, and and feeling all good and and just focused. True. Sometimes you don't have to get approval from people, you know. True. Like hey, umepotea kwa huduma, ni nini mbaya? Kwani kunaenda aje? I mean, no, sometimes it's good to sit back and just to retreat, mm. to seek God, to pray and just to 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 be to be strong as a young, as, as a young person you have to prioritize as as Priska Steve has said that we need to prioritize we have said that Ma- Martha was doing something that was noble yeah. something that was was good that something that was acceptable but at that particular time according to Jesus it wasn't important important yeah. what was important was what Mary was Mary what that that which Mary was doing at that particular time and so even for us young people we need to prioritize we need to seek God we need to have that desire you see Mary hakuambiwa they they were tika mm au say what you need to do wakaka chini na ende huyo hapo and you know Jesus was in Thailand as he said earlier he had other other guys around him you know and i'm trying to imagine he just had performed uh, several miracles apo mbeleni you know especially in verse chapter 8 it's talk is it 8 or yeah actually it's chapter 8 or 9 where he had fed the 5000 yeah. people <laughs> and so that gospel was all over mm-hmm. people knew kuna msia amelisha watu 5000 with how many fish and bread two fish yes and two fish and then it was it was that thing was all over and so people were like how we want to know and so they were looking for him so i'm trying to imagine Awa say what is that awa kwa hapa kwa Martha and Mary is somewhere busy listening to this person instead of helping yeah. Steve what do you think what do you think is making us as young people not have not prioritize the feet of Jesus or rather not spending time with Jesus uh, we are afraid of uh, the process when you to last to, last week yeah. yes yeah like tunataka vitu za araka ewe you listen we are the micro generation yeah. <laughs> like unataka tu walk okay ufungue kanisa yeah. na anointing imeanza yeah. kuflow yeah. i was uh, while you were talking niko nakumbuka uh, david venye my brothers wake wote wali come then he enda kaitwa he was anointed but bado he went back kukuwa a shepherd he went back but he was anointed mm-hmm. Lakini tukiokoa kwa generation umeanointiwa ai mimi ni king mse what what ni nini unaweza niambia then he still waited after that hiyo time hiyo time uh, uh, sola alikuwa na hizo mapepo mm. alijua he was anointed to be a king akaitwa kucheza hiyo kitu but he st- bado alikuwa na accept kuna process before fike mali alikuwa no, no. so anajua the secret place that is where that is where uh, anakuwa strengthened no no you at your time ali alienda huko akapata wasi wanaogopa goliath aloliza who is this uncircumcised philistine kwa nini alijua kitu god alikuwa amemfunza kwa closet hawa si hawajui by the way where eh? could he, where did he get that courage from I alijua mean, yeah. where Yeah, like, oh, yeah. I don't know this guy is huge yeah. like Nauko. Where Ju- did he get this confidence? Alijua process Mungu amempeleka. Yeah. Ame like amekuwa sasa in a relationship. Anajua Mungu si huko siji tuliambiwa aliua bear, aliua lion. Yeah. So, sasa hii. Jo sinaona hiyo ni kitu ilifanyika in a secret place. No one knew. But sasa it was now revealed. It was revealed. He accepted this process. And hakuonyesha mtu that I was going through this na Mungu. Mm-hmm. Naona because god alijua kuna season utashine na there's no one who will take that star out of you so it's all about process Talking about that have you ever looked at someone you admire mm. in whatever things they do serving people you mm. know preaching singing mm. you know at work you look at them and you admire them and you feel like asking them what do you do outside this you yes. know because it's kind of abnormal it doesn't look normal you know when someone sings and 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 people worship people get saved you wonder kwani what 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 do you do you know and you know these guys don't come and tell you like ah you know i spent seven days in prayer and fasting i wake up at 3am to read the bible i have a 
they don't say you just see the work yeah you yeah. and it makes you think Kwani, what do you do outside this you know because your relationship with god cannot be hidden cannot. it cannot be hidden when you're having a good relationship with god mm. we will see mm. we will know we will admire you mm. we will ask you questions yes. you know because when you have an encounter with god he changes you completely, completely. Yeah. Eric Eric Muzami is saying verse 39 stood out for him. Mm. Um he say it's a gem. Mm. Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening mm. to what he said. While there are a lot of things uh to be done and a lot going on around my life, I ought to choose one and that is spending time with Jesus and listening to him. Mm. Not only spending but also listening to him. What is he saying to me during this season? What do I need to change? You know, what do I need to adjust? Uh, Kevin, Kevin I'm still saying what stood up for me is the fact that we are so worried about the things of this world with all our strength, power and imagination and forget about the things that God requires uh, from us as it is stated in Matthew 6:33 but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. You know, I was thinking about this uh, scripture as well. When the Bible says and seek ye first the kingdom of God first okay first. and all all, all all these things which are these things all all, all. <laughs> literally all <laughs> name them because our priorities again are different all these things that you are looking for that you are admiring that you are desiring all all, all. these things you know, <laughs> yeah, you know. But, literally you see even in that seeking there is also a process it does not mean that you will go to the closet you seek you find god then you get out the things are there waiting for you yeah. there's also a process in seeking god in seeking there's a process there's have you ever tried to fetch firewood in a forest yes yes please have you you oh. guys are just we were born yesterday oh, wow you know there is when you go to the forest to get to uh, to, to fetch firewood you are not going to pick yeah it's fetching looking yeah, for the from first, here yeah. to there mm. there are elephants there are snakes there are every mm. but at the end of it will get your bundle mm. of of mm. of firewood and yeah. you'll be satisfied mm. the same thing with seeking mm. seeking it's not about like going and picking oof puff puff going picking the ministry that you need pick it's seeking <laughs> seek here for the kingdom of god and oh. these things shall be added to you i like that um Obash, Obash said, this, this stood out for me, verse 42, part B. And it will not be taken away Gosh. from her. This is the assurance, um, this is the assurance we have in Christ eternal life, John 10, 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You know him? Plucking from God's hand. You know I'm trying to imagine Mary, where she was. No one could pluck her. You know, plucking is not like picking. Ni kumoa. Literally, kumoa. No one. And no one could pluck Mary from the feet of Jesus. And actually, Jesus defended her. Achakai. Mother. Apa ndipo anafaa kuwa. You know, she has chose the right thing. Listening to me. Listening to the words of life. Listening to the things that are not going to perish. You know, things that will make her shine, things that will make her prosper, things that will make her um, outdo other things that are happening in this world, things that will make her achieve her purpose, you know. And that's what God is telling us as young people. That's in our individual lives, you know. God is so much interested in your heart or with your heart. Is it with or in? With your heart. He wants that relationship with you, that intimate relationship with you. He wants to show you the things that are to come. He wants to use you. He wants to glorify himself. Remember last time we said we are ox of righteousness. And we said that an ox it, it doesn't just grow like any other tree. It takes quite some time before we can see by the way that's an ox. You know, because the roots have to go deep and deep and deep. And that's deeper is what we are saying. Having a relationship with God. You know. So all the things that you're doing, my sister, my brother, they are okay. They matter. They are good, perfect. But one thing matters. One thing matters. And that is 
listening to Jesus Christ and listening and having a relationship with him, okay? Having an intimate relationship, spending quality time with him, you know? And, and, and that's it, clearly. That's what God expects of us. He's willing to do so many things. He's willing to help us. He's willing to, uh, uh, to make us shine. He's willing to walk with us. He didn't promise heaven on earth. He didn't promise like it will be all smooth. Roses. You know, it, it, no, no. He didn't promise all roses. And even roses are thorns. Okay? Yeah. Even roses yeah. are thorns. Yeah. So he didn't promise all a cool and, and glamorous kind of life and heaven and all merry kind of life. But he, he promised that he'll be with us. And so what will happen if you're not spending time with him? What will happen if you're not listening to him? What do you think during this season? What will happen if you're not seeking to know what he's saying about our families? What will happen if we don't know what God is saying about our lives during this, this COVID season? You know, uh, thank you for them that are watching with us. I hope you're being, you're being blessed and, um, and, and being challenged as we are because... We say the word of God is, 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 is able to pierce in our hearts. And you know, it's like two double-edged sword. It can cut us and it can correct us, it can rebuke us. And that is basically what is happening. And so we have used, uh, that was E, envisioning from the acronym of power. We say the first one is prayer. The second one is observe, just observing what is happening. And the third one is? Write. You write. Writing is like uh, writing down or noting down the verse that stood out and... The other one was envision. envision. This is what we have done just right now, just trying to apply it in our lives and see how the word of God can be applied to us. And so the last one is responding to the word of God. What has, uh, you as Prisca, what, what are you getting? What is one thing that you're getting from this context? The one thing that you're carrying home, like this is it. Going back for communion, going back to the place where I first had him. Yeah. Just going back to that, please. Yeah. Okay, Steve. Stop worrying. <laughs> You're worried about stop. so Stop. I, I need to stop worrying. What's yeah. bothering you? <laughs> What's happening? What's yeah. happening? <laughs> I need to, to st stop worrying, set my priorities right, mm -hmm. and just focus on Jesus. On Jesus. And so for me, it's just prioritizing. Uh, basically, I have many things to do, just yeah. like any other person, but I need to prioritize. This is one thing that matters. This is one thing that is very important. I may fail to do everything else, but having a devotion with God, a relationship, and basically we're saying studying the word of God and meditating is one thing that I can't afford to do on a daily basis. Remember we said you're not studying the word of God once a week or once a month or taking three hours in a month so that you take care of the whole month, you know. Just jump by the whole week. So Sunday, take three hours in prayer. You know, no, it's a relationship you're building. So take ten minutes a day, twenty minutes a day. Start with five minutes a day. You know, as you move, as the Lord blesses you, and you will be nourished in your heart. Internally, you'll be nourished, and you'll be able to see this. So the the last thing is um, responding to the word of God, and in response. You just respond, that which has stood out for you, that which has stood out for you, that which has, has stood out for me. It's now going to God and telling God that, God, this is your bread. This is your word. You have spoken to me. Please help me change one, two, three, and four. Please help me work out this one, two, three. Please help me become like one, two, three. Please help me become like Mary, like I cling on, you know, such that I have to be reminded by the way I need to do some house chores, you know. Please help me. It's, it's responding to the word of God. So our prayer and our desire is that we will grow as mature Christians. We will become mature. We will study the word of God. We will not accept mediocrity. We will seek to know what the word of God says in every situation. And each and every chapter or verse or, or context of the word of God that you read, you will seek to know what was happening before, what happened later, what was the culture, what was the context, and what was happening during that time, for you to have a clear understanding, you know, because actually someone can pick this context, uh, uh, can take this out of context. Yeah. For example, you deciding to tell your mom, mom, one thing matters. I'm not going to wash those utensils, you know, one thing matters, you know. <laughs> or failing to go to work and saying, boss, 
One thing matters. Staying at the feet of Jesus. Come here, go to heaven and stay. You know? go. Yeah, so it can actually be taken out of context. And that is not what we are saying. But we have understood it was a culture. Yeah. It was their culture. It, the hospitality was their culture. So actually, Martha was doing what was expected. But we are saying there is the order of priority on how we need to be doing our things. There is time for everything. Time to do your work, time to see God, time to serve, and time also to sit back and rest because it is actually very important. So please uh, be consistent in studying the word of God. Let's know what um, uh, you're seeking to, to, to know or the, 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 you know, in our WhatsApp group, let's know what you're studying and if we can discuss this more and more so that we can become um, mature Christians. So may God bless you so much. Uh, we are looking forward to have another interactive session next week on Tuesday at time like now from 1 to 1.40. God bless you so much. I will ask uh, Priska to share a word of prayer as we conclude. Okay, let's pray. Our Father and our God, we are grateful for this time we've had in your presence. We are grateful for your word that has come forth in simplicity. Oh God, we thank you for the word for the specific words that are stood out for us, Lord, we pray that you will remind us and you'll keep telling us, oh God, to just sit at your feet and relax and breathe in, oh God, to breathe in your goodness, oh God, and to breathe in your nature. We pray for us who are here and also for our viewers, oh God, may you continue walking with them, may you continue guiding them in their walks with you, oh God, we bless you and we glorify you for the rest of the day. May you lead us, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you so much and have a great day.